exposure and uh, DART. Uh, Dave is a long-term, long-time regular of the Kosher Meetup. He is one of the people behind Maria.com. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, as I understand it, a uh, lover of mainframe computers. So oh, yeah. give a <laughs> round of applause. Thank, Thank you. Thank um, you. So this is just an experience report talk. Uh, I'm just going to talk very briefly about what I made. And then if you have any questions, you can ask me right after the talk or later. So uh, yeah, I made a mobile app with Clojure, which is, uh, you know, let's just talk about it. So it's called Neuro Reader. It is the app version of this book. Please pass this around, take a quick look. Um, the client is Santiago, give a wave. Santiago is a doctor. His wife is also a doctor who works in urology. That's the, uh, the urinary tract. And she wrote this book studying for the European medical exams, the board exams, and turned it, so it's a study guide for those exams. And people loved the book. It's very popular in the urology world. <laughs> and uh, people were clamoring for an app because uh, it is designed really for, to, to be a book, to be really good as a book, but books are not, uh, they don't get updates over the cloud and they're not text searchable. So. So we made this thing. Um, like I said, it's a very simple app. It's just a reader. Um, we do have paying customers, though, so that's nice. Uh, and it, the, some of the important things I want to talk about are the time. So I had no knowledge of Closure Dart when I started the project. Six weeks later, it was a working prototype with all the main features in place. Uh, I thought that was pretty good. I was also working part time on it. Uh, I would say maybe a little more than half. Um, and then the total time, calendar time to launch was eight months, including all the App Store bullshit, which is substantial. <laughs> um, and then uh, midway through that, or a little bit further than halfway, um, I, had a, I had to switch over to other work, so I handed it off to Santiago. And I think it's a good thing to say about both Flutter documentation and the Closure Dart project that he was shipping complex features in under a week, even when I gave him a project that wouldn't load on his computer for, was it two days, three days? Yeah. It was pretty rough. Um, okay, let me show you, hopefully, the, hopefully, the simulator, if it cooperates with me, which it's not. So we might have to skip that part if I can get my mouse back and then get my, we're here, no. You can't see it, that's good, that's a good start. Yes, please. And then, no. No, the simulator really doesn't want to see, be seen. I'm sorry. Can try oh. mirroring your display? Yeah, one second. Let me get my mouse back. And then over here we go. There we go. OK. So I've already logged in, because as, I, as we said, it is a, a paying app. Um, the main content is, is here in the book. There are more books uh, coming shortly. That's why. People want to pay money for it because he gets new books as uh, his wife writes them. And there's also some extra stuff, like if you really want to see the progression of renal cell carcinoma um, and how to treat it, uh, you can go here. This is a PDF. This is a real MVP project, uh, product, I'm sorry, MVP feature. Um, but most of the content is in the book. Um, you can see that I was reading about incontinence and neurourology. Let's go in there. There's diagrams, yada, yada, yada. You know, it's a, it's a study app. There's diagrams, there's charts, there's uh, all sorts of stuff. That's not really what we're here to talk about. And yeah, that's that. Okay. I feel like that's enough of the demo. If you want to see more, we can do more. And I do have to make this go away. Okay. And I can have my app back. Okay, so what's going on here? Um, this is the same value proposition as Rich Hickey had in 2008, right? What's the, the, what's the word? Reach. He said, you are Lispers, you want to do Lisp, here's the JVM. You can reach anywhere, any client. Uh, then we extended that to JavaScript and the browser and to bash style scripting with uh, GraalVM. And now we can reach Dart and everything that brings to it. Um, so let's look at this language that makes mobile apps possible. I'm going to keep this on the, on the screen for a while. You don't have to read everything right away. So the way to understand Dart is to put yourself in the shoes of Google in about 2010. 
So you've got uh, maybe half a dozen apps that tens of millions of people use, and they're all giant JavaScript uh, code bases. Huge, absolutely huge. And okay, so we're talking about Gmail, we're talking about uh, ads, like the, the thing they run their entire business on. All the money goes through this giant JavaScript code base, and they hate it. Uh, Google Plus, Google Docs, Google Maps, all that stuff. And uh, the Googlers hate it. Everybody's saying uh, they have the four main complaints, and they're coming from everyone. They say, the developer experience sucks. We hate this. Uh, they're saying the tooling is weak. We hate this. They're saying there's no types and no annotations. That's not the critique I would make, but it is a fair critique, right? Um, and what's the, oh, the fourth one I, I put myself off. Uh, there's no way to see the, the larger program structure, right? These are ad hoc JavaScript apps. That it's just, you just have no idea where you are. And so they said, well, we have this, uh, this expert veteran virtual machinist, Lars Bach, who worked on the V8 engine. And he's worked on a bunch of other really impressive uh, virtual machines. Uh, what if we give him this job, right? So then you get cross-platform apps, web, mobile, desktop. This is where we're coming in from. So you've got a virtual machine. Really, it started as just web and, and uh, desktop or you know, server side. And they said, well, as long as you're building a virtual machine, you might as well get mobile as well, right? In for a penny, in for a pound. Um, the other thing that they did, and I respect this a lot, is they said from the very beginning, we want this to be a good developer experience because of developer time performance. Everything relies on it being fast, so you can have fast as hell hot reloading. That's super important. They prioritized that from the very beginning, and it worked. Uh, it gives us, a, I would say, so, uh, it gives us both in Dart and in Closure Dart, maybe 80% of the good developer experience you want from a REPL. It's not a REPL. We'll talk about that later. Um, so it's fast, it's fast in production, it's got a small bundle size. So those were all Google priorities. The other big thing they wanted is to be conservative. They're, Google is a huge organization, they don't have time to uh, teach their developers anything new. So they said, someone coming from JavaScript, C Sharp, C++, Java, they have to be able to be productive in this day one. And so unfortunately we get some very basic bitch syntax. Nothing new, nothing interesting, nothing effective like Lisp. That's just, that is what it is. What are some other influences? Uh, yeah, they, uh, the, they also brought in Gilad Braca. That was one of the other major developers in the project. He worked on the Java language specification. So he was pretty good at, at uh, language design and understanding the consequences of early decisions in lang language design. And the thing about Gilad is yes, you, you hear you know, Java language specification, okay, maybe a little bit boring, but he also came from the strong talk family. Right? So he had a, an, a background in dynamic programming, the small talk tradition. Uh, strong talk is a optionally static typed variant of small talk. So from there we got uh, optional types where the compiler will do all the interesting uh, or hard work. Well, we get to do the interesting work, that's nice. Um, optional types with type inference, the compiler is pretty smart about that. And everything is an object, much better than the kind of some things are objects, some things aren't in Java land. Uh, the last thing that, that, that they focused on is they, were, they had um, a target for the browser and a target for all these other multi-threaded environments. So they needed an async model that would abstract well for both those very different kinds of things. And they decided on an, uh, an in Erlang influenced approach with uh, isolates, which are easy to confuse with threads, but they are not threads, right? So they are kind of a place where things happen and you can't touch it and you have to pass messages back and forth to get anything done. Anyway, so not, not a terrible language even though it was hamstrung by conservatism in the basic syntax of the language. So that's 2010-ish. Um, 2015 comes Flutter, which is the big UI framework on top of Dart. It comes out of Google, it's very well funded, it's uh, got a lot of heavy tech behind it. Um, runs on all these different platforms, which is a ton of work. Uh, so that's 2015. In the 2020s, very early 2020s, the, the VC darling, Rome Research, decided that they wanted uh, to launch their app with Clojure onto mobile applications, uh, onto mobile targets. So that wasn't really possible at the time without using, say, React Native. They decided they didn't want that. And so they reached out to Christophe Grand who you might know from other Clojure stuff. Uh, he's pretty popular, and uh, uh, he's been around since the very, very beginning. And Baptiste Deutsch. She did a talk, 
for them. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's one of the original gangsters of, of Closure. Uh, so he, th those two wrote the uh, Closure to Dart compiler, and then a library on top of that using some really impressive gnarly, gnarly macros uh, to replicate all of the Flutter, it's called widgets, the, all the objects in the Flutter land. Um, so this is a pretty quick talk. This is the last slide. Uh, what are the results of that experiment that Rome Research did? Well, we've, the Rome Research is in production. My app is in production. There's maybe another couple dozen pro, uh, products in production. Um, what are the downsides? There's no REPL, right? I said we got 80% of a REPL with hot reloading, and that's, that's about where it feels. I still have questions of a running system that I want to ask that it won't tell me, and that drives me absolutely crazy. I really love the REPL programming, but this is pretty good. Uh, there's no multi-methods, but I think those are overused in Clojure anyway. Uh, the stack traces are mixed. If it's from the Clojure Dart side, it's usually pretty good. If it's from the Dart side, it's usually pretty good. It's actually uh, some of that type inference uh, went into the stack traces and errors, error finding where they said, you did this, maybe you meant that, maybe, and usually they're right. The errors from the Flutter side of things are absolutely garbage. There are pages and pages and pages and pages saying, you know, here's every widget that was involved in what went wrong and good luck finding which one is actually the problem. Um, so that's stack traces and errors. The biggest, the biggest challenge for me were the weird types in this language. So they have generics and they have mix-ins. To me, these are, I said more complex and I'll, I'll stand by that, um, more complex than what we have in Java. They're also more useful, but basically they're just, you know, it's a very type-heavy approach. Uh, I did have to reach out for help to the, uh, the, the two French guys for how to interpret and then translate some complicated generic stuff with mix-ins and, you know, blah, blah, blah. But that worked fine. They're very responsive and very helpful. Um, two last points I want to make. Uh, there's a great paper by Sriram Krishnamurti, who works in the Racket community. It's called... Uh, Teaching Programming Languages in a Post-Linnaean Age. I can send you the link if you're interested. Uh, it's a very short paper, very good. Post-Linnaean. So it's a, a Linnaeanism is a kind of ontology, ontological approach where you categorize things originally, like biological, all biological things, into strict categories. And he said, we're now, uh, biology has gone past that and said we're in a post-Linnaean age. You can't strictly categorize programming languages by, oh, so this is object-oriented, this is functional, this is procedural. That's not what's going on here. And Dart is a great example. Dart has object orientation in the large. It has functional programming in the small. This is their goal. And they wanted the whole time to give it kind of a, a scripty feel to it when you're making something small. Um, so, the, and, the, and the, the Clojure Dart folks really push this home and they say, look, our instinct as Clojure developers is to make everything pretty functional. Put that down for a while. Go, the Flutter way of doing things is relatively object-oriented. If you're passing things around, it's more performant and easier to do it through the, the Flutter object system and, uh, and just not be as functional. Uh, and the last point I want to make is, yes, it is production ready. I just want to hammer that home because I keep getting that question. That's all I have to say. I'm Dave Liepman. Uh, you should hire me to build a Closure Dart app, and that's all I have to say. Thank you. Oh, uh, questions, yeah. 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 Before I just get to prime the pump, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so, like, it really reminds me of kind of the early days of working with React Native. Mm -hmm. So, like, I was working at a project at the time when we were using Closure Script with React Native. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, you know, what you t uh, talked about, you know, having to translate, like, a library example into Closure. Mm -hmm. You know, back then, I, 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 <coughs> That resonated with me because that's also something that we have to do, especially with yeah. those sort of you know, JavaScript shenanigans involved Absolutely. Or object orientation. So yeah. like how much of a problem is it, how much fun is it to use, you know, part of the reason yeah. why using something like Flutter mm -hmm. is that you have this big and growing mm -hmm. system. How, how, how easy to use, is it to use like libraries? That's a great question. Um, I would say that 95% of the time, so 19 times out of 20, uh, the Flutter docs are really, really good. Google did a great job with it. Uh, they're still working hard on that. And most of the time, the libraries 
work out of the box. Um, the Closure Dart folks have done, I, I don't know, maybe two thirds or more of the Flutter examples have been ported to Closure Dart. That's nice. Uh, the things that have not been ported, and it kind of makes sense, uh, are the complicated type system things. Um, so, I mean, it took me in Java land uh, a few years to get used to looking at some type description in the Java docs and get comfortable doing that in Clojure. And I think the same thing is going on here. That's, that's really the hardest part for me. But libraries, in terms of picking them up from the Dart ecosystem, that part's been fine, except for when they get too excited about making the type, the, the type relationship, class relationship too complex. And I have, I have had to ask for, for help from those Frenchies. No question here? Um, oh, sorry, yeah. yeah uh, what does UI code look like? Is it like yeah. objects or yeah. lookup or like Yeah, like? good question. It's all macros. Oh, you can't see that. Uh, can I bring this over here? Yeah. Oh, why am I not? Can you see that? Yeah. Let me make it a little bigger for the people in the back. So, how's that? Can the people, Daniel, can you see that? Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's do one more. Uh, okay, so, uh, yeah? I cannot swap the theme around. I'm not, I'm not good enough at Emacs. Um, so we have a, this is a the bookmark screen. Uh, you have a, a, wi a widget macro from the Flutter library that the Closure Direct guys made. Um, you have, you're watching some rules from the global state atom. Uh, rules, appendix, language. This is actually from a different project because uh, it's better, uh, better example code. Um, yeah, so you watch, th this is a good example of uh, doing things the closure dart way. So this is passing values around by having a state atom and mutating that in, in the UI. And then those changes propagate through the watch uh, command. Uh, get is a very objecty thing that goes into the, the Flutter side. Uh, this is a good example of something that would take 10 lines in Dart itself. It's kind of a pain in the ass, and we can just say, just turn the scaffold messenger into SM, pass that around, we're fine. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, a lot of, uh, it's a lot of widgets. It's a lot of widgets that, you know, they fit together in the way that they're designed to fit together in the closure way, uh, the, sorry, not in the closure way, in the Flutter way. Um, so there's a lot of, you're at the docs constantly. This here is actually the verbose way of doing it because whenever they do padding, it's this, it's this whole, it's this whole process. They, but the Closure Dart guys have made it easier. Somewhere else in the code, I've already switched. They can make this a keyword and you just say, like you make a map and you do the, the important parts. So that's a lot easier. Does that give a, a sense of it? Yeah. I have a, I, I'm sorry, I had a question here. Yeah. What's next? Oh, everything. Uh, we want to do a little quiz thing so that you can, right now it's like a text-based thing because it, it really was like get it out the door uh, before other work comes in. Uh, but we want to have a little, you know, study guide review thing. What is, I, think that's, I think that's next. Yeah? I don't know much about Dark. Could you please tell me a bit about what does uh, the code you write from files do? Because, I mean, mm. Yeah. Uh, this compiles to Dart. I'm sure it's around here somewhere. Is it an out? Uh, oh, binaries. You're asking about the binaries. I don't know. I'm, I'm asking. I'm just, I have no idea. No, it, it produces it produces Dart files that are in somewhere in this directory uh, directory structure, and those are watched so we get hot reloading from the closure Dart side. So yeah, it's a. Uh, we have to have a very fast compiler from closure to Dart, and then the hot reloading happens again. So it's it's uh, it's all pretty streamlined. So Dart, so it's basically generated source code. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like script. yeah. It's it's much closer to closure script. Yeah. Yeah, Daniel. So uh, two questions. I right, so I don't know if you already covered this, but uh, and if you did, feel free to just yeah, sure. the short answer. Sure. So first question is, um, what's the story? Um, about like integrating with Dart libraries. Yeah. Really, uh, yeah, good question. And second question yeah. is, 
you mentioned like complicated type systems that are uh, not being just ported to, to Clojure Bus. Yeah. How much of that is actually needed on a day-to-day -day basis? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I blanked during the second part. Of your, during the second question. So uh, yeah, you mentioned uh, this, this complicated uh, ah, yeah, system, yeah. system thing yeah. that has not been ported. Yeah. Is that something that you have to kind of like deal with while working on this app? Yeah. Yeah. I said. It, I mean, it came up maybe once a month. Uh, so. Yeah. I mean, early on, I would work on one of these things for more. Maybe I don't know. An hour, and then reach out for help in the Closure Dart channel, and they were they were really snappy. Uh, n most recently, I ran into one, banged my head against it for two days, and then went to the Closure Dart channel, and he said, "Oh yeah, that's a uh, sorry, that's a bit of the thing that's not really so normal." Um, sometimes you have to do t um, declarations like, yeah, here's an example uh, where we're reifying a search delegate class, and you have to say. You have, to, you have to tell it that this is a, an array of widgets. OK. Uh, what's the other weird one that I just saw? Uh, yeah. Here's another example. Complaints, right? Yeah. Like, very often when you need to twist something like this, the compiler will immediately say, like, hey, what type is this? It cannot be dynamic. What's yeah. up? Yeah, yeah. So you know you have to, uh, right. you have to hint it. To yeah. Code. I think this one. The dark compiler, not the closure dark, the dark compiler. Yeah. The, the, yeah, the Dart compiler will say, "Yeah, you're giving me this this uh, you know closure sequence, but I don't I don't understand how that can be turned into uh, a Dart. A, a, I don't know what the Dart name is." Uh, here's the other weird thing: uh, they have to, and there are I think they're probably going to change this syntax. Um, this is a generic. Let's see, a generic class that we are instantiating just as object because it needs something. Um, this is the navigation stuff that we built. They have a, they have a stack construct. Uh, your first question. Uh, about the integration with uh, external. Yeah, yeah that, that's, that's um, pretty simple pub spec. Yeah. Sorry. We, let's see. You put it in the equivalent of, oh no, it's up here. Put in the equivalent of their depths Eden. Uh, they really, they really want you to get the most recent version, but we don't do that. Uh, so you declare the dependency, and then you put in the requires, like the, the third-party thing would be Flutter slidable, and then you just call it. I mean, it really is like super simple. The and and I don't think any of these gave me any trouble. Yeah, it really was as easy as as Java interop. Bang bang. Yeah, Ben. First of all, uh, first question I'm assuming the answer is yes. Would you say that this made you more productive than using Dart actually? Yeah, there's a, there's a great example. Um, I mean, first of all, I don't want to learn Dart, so I would be unmotivated. <laughs> um, but uh, a friend of mine, actually, when I, when I showed her this stuff, uh, she's working in Go and, and Ruby and, and stuff like that. And she, she mentioned uh, porting uh, like a one-liner, maybe a two-liner from Ruby to, I think, Go. And it, she said it, it was like 35 lines. So that's, that's kind of my feeling about this. Yeah. OK, so the second question, based on that, do you think that's mainly because of simplicity or because of easiness? Simplicity. Uh, more, uh, neither. Macros. Uh, so, oh it's boy. Of complexity. No, it's, it's really this stuff. Like, <laughs> it's not simple. It's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, so simplicity. I don't know where concision and you know cutting through, cutting through the bullshit. Like uh, it's the, again, it's the same value proposition as Rich had in two thousand eight, right? Like Java makes you jump all, through all these hoops to declare what you're doing and what kind of errors it can throw and yada yada yada, and just like get on with it, you know? Like the colors need. We need colors from the theme. Give me the colors from the theme. This this one line is like you know five, six, seven, eight lines in in, in Dart. I don't I don't have time for that. No. I mean, uh, once every three weeks, maybe, uh, when something goes wrong in the compiler that is particularly weird. Um, but no. I look at a lot of Flutter documentation. A lot, a lot. Yeah. Uh, happy to answer more questions, but we're out of time. All right. Thank you. Thank you.